your host, Bill Teagans. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. Another busy week for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. A great win over Iowa State over the weekend. And last night, a tough loss to Nebraska. And, Coach, it seems like we've been on the road for a long time. Be nice to get back home. We'll play uh, the University of Colorado on Saturday, and that's our finale. And uh, we'll be honoring our four seniors uh, against the Buffaloes. But we played three straight games on the road. We uh, went to Colorado and won. Uh, then we beat Iowa State. And as you said, we played very well up there, and it was a terrific game. And then last evening, we ran into a buzzsaw. It was their last game in Lincoln, and uh, Piekowski and his teammates put on quite a show. And we didn't play quite as well. But our schedule has been so screwy. It seems like uh, we play a bunch at home in a row, and then we go on the road and uh, play uh, two or three games in a row. And it doesn't seem like uh, the season really is over as far as the regular season, but it is. And by winning Saturday, we can uh, clinch second place by ourselves and uh, then get ready for the Big 8 tournament next week and then uh, on to the NCAA. So obviously a lot of basketball still to go, and we hope that uh, you'll be here for Saturday's big season finale against Colorado. More of that to come here in a couple of moments. But when we come back, show you some great basketball highlights, especially from Iowa State when the Eddie Sutton Show continues. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. Uh, the Cowboys go up to Iowa State last Saturday. A big, big win there for the Cowboys. Clinched no worse than a tie for second place, and now the Cowboys have finished in the top two for four straight years. Well, we won it one year, and we finished second three times in the four years I've been here. We just can't seem to, to get over the hump. Uh, but when you finish second in the Big 8, uh, you've uh, had a good season because this is one of the great uh, leagues in college basketball. Nice entry pass here by Brooks. We're running what we call secondary break where we try to isolate uh, Bryant down low and Bryant made, it, made a good catch and put the ball home. Boy, Bryant is probably playing his best basketball of the year right now. Well, he had a terrific week. He was 21 out of 28 from the field, scored 65 points. He had an all-time high in this game right here, 35 points. And uh, there's a, a nice uh, pass. Nice basket, nice free throw. He was 11 out of 12 from the free throw line, so he is shooting free throws much better. 20 out of 27 from the free throw line for the week. Boy, Brendan Manzer has come in, Coach, really done a great job offensively for you. Well, he had 22 points in the two games this week, and he, in the last uh, three weeks of practice, he's just really started to play well, and that's how we determine who gets in the games, and he's responded. He, he had... Uh, Nine points in this game, and then in our loss to Nebraska last evening, he had 13, which is an all-time high for him here at uh, OSU. Burley with 12, hit the jumper there. This game was a tough game throughout. Good pressure defense here by the Cowboys. Good hustle play by Brooks. who went on the floor. They knocked the ball loose from uh, Mika Leak, and uh, the turnover uh, leads to a basket by Randy Rutherford. This Both teams shot the ball well in this game. Uh, we shot 53%, uh, uh, and they shot 51%. We out-rebounded them by six. Well, that Beecham can shoot it, can he? He came off the bench and <laughs> hit, hit us for 25 points. He was 7 out of 9 from three-point range, and we're going to get a look at that, uh, some of his outside shooting uh, late there in the ball game. It looked like we had the game pretty well under control, and all of a sudden uh, he started hitting those three-pointers. It reminded me two years ago when uh, we were in a similar situation up in Ames, and uh, they had a great guard uh, that came in there and hit some shots off of Corey Williams. I can still see that. Julius... <laughs> Thigpen. Yeah, Thigpen, Justice Thigpen. Justice. Yeah, he was a great player, no doubt about it. You're down by three at halftime. You've got to feel pretty good because this is a tough place to play. Well, you know, they had a 22-game winning streak going into the season. They lost a couple of conference games early when Meyer uh, was in the accident, and uh, they've come back, and Johnny Orr and his uh, staff have really done a good job, but it is a terrific place to play. Very loud crowd, very clean crowd, uh, very enthusiastic to say the positive things, and... Uh, for the visitors, it's, it is a hard place to, to win. Uh, they took Missouri to overtime uh, a couple of games before we came in there last week. So they've played very well late in the season. We're going to have to play these guys again uh, in Kansas City. That'll be our first round opponent uh, next Friday. And here's a good ball. There's we'll beat him again. Well, he came off the bench and just lit it up. We did a good job defensively on two of the best players in, in the conference, Mika Leek and Hoiberg. They only had uh, 15 and 12, but uh, Beecham had a great afternoon. Country, boy, that's, that's just an automatic two almost, isn't it, when he gets the ball right there? Well, he's a very, very good offensive player, and he's, he's gotten a lot better defensively. I, I really believe he should be the MVP of the conference because he's got better numbers at the offensive end than, he's ever, than he had last year when he won it. 
and he's certainly a lot better defensive player, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Scott Pierce hits the jumper there. A lot of people don't realize that. You look at his stats, and I guess because so much was expected of him, but he's had a better year offensively. Well, he's, he's rebounded in our conference. Uh, he's averaged over 11 rebounds, and I think he's averaging about 22 points a game in conference play, and that's what it should be judged on. But he's just so much better at the defensive end. He's blocked a lot of shots, and even when he doesn't block him, he intimidates a lot of people in there. Another power move as he turns, goes to the free throw line. He hit some, some key free throws over a two-game stretch. I think he was like 18 out of 20. He missed some late last evening when he got tired, but uh, we had to play him 40 minutes in that game against Nebraska. And when you get fatigued, you're, you're going to miss some free throws. This country going to work again. It's that little baseline move. That's pretty tough. 73-67 under four minutes to go I, here. I felt good at this point, uh, but I guess you never should feel good when uh, that three-point uh, shot is in, in the game because uh, they can catch up real quickly. And, you can see Mika Leak driving to the basket, and they call uh, Bryant for a foul. And They're the best uh, free throw shooting team in the league. I think they're averaging about 78% at the charity stripe. There's a cardinal sin right there. Fred doesn't block out, and uh, Beecham goes over and tips it in. And There's Beecham hitting one from deep in the corner. Again, he finished with 25 points. I believe Great that's shoot. the shot that tied the game at 75. And we run a special play, and it breaks down. Look at this shot. That Boy, it's always got to be an element of luck to, uh, when you win at close ball games. And there's uh, Brooks Thompson banking one off the glass. And here comes Mikalik right back, and he banks one off the glass, off balance, and hits the free throw, and it's tied again. But Brooks, Brooks hit some big shots. Yeah, he hit the last eight points for us. That was a big three pointer. And here comes Beecham again off of a double screen. It was like a nightmare. He never now we're, you. Then, we're in the last minute of play, and uh, Brooks gets a shot here. We get him a, a good look at the basket. And he just uh, doesn't hit this one, but he comes back to hit the game winner. Wide open, type of shot you want. Hoiberg gets the ball. Now they're going to go for one shot. And Keanu Roberts uh, has started to play much better in here. He makes a good defensive play, knocks the ball loose. Now it's a race for the basket. Randy goes in, might have got bumped a little, no call. Misses a shot, but Brooks uh, very alertly tips it back in. Now four seconds to go. and. They throw the ball in and back to Hoiberg, and he's going to get a Hail Mary here, and it doesn't go down, and we win 83-81. What a great basketball game, and uh, that's, a, that's such a huge win for the Cowboys. Again, clinch is uh, at least second place in the conference, a tie, and, and you playing up there, that's a big win. It is a big win, and uh, like uh, I said, one of our goals to begin the season was to win the, the round robin, and, and Missouri has won it, and they've just played outstanding basketball. but. To finish second in this league is certainly no disgrace, and it means that you've had a good season. And we've got some things going for us now. We got beat last night, uh, but we got Colorado here Saturday, and that'll be our 21st win if we uh, do come out on top. And then it's on to the Big H. You erase all of the records at that point. Everybody's zero and zero, and we'll play these Cyclones again up there on Friday afternoon. And we're in the bracket with Kansas and K-State, and the other bracket, Missouri plays Colorado and uh, Nebraska and Oklahoma play, so it should be a terrific tournament. Well, let's take a look at Nebraska. We're back up there in Lincoln yesterday, and uh, interesting game up there. Well, it's very interesting. I've never seen a, a crowd any louder in Lincoln. Uh, it was senior night, and uh, as I said, there's Piekowski. Hits a very, very difficult runner. <clears throat> they jumped out on us early. We got the ball into Bryant, and when we did that, good things happened. He had 19 points in the first half. There's Piekowski hitting one of his threes, and we tried several people on him, but we never could slow him down. Well, he, he just hit some unbelievable shots. Again, Brendan's in off the bench, plays very well for you, scores uh, 13 for him. There's a backdoor play. Uh, they missed the first shot, but Piekowski tips it in. And he He's hit. a terrific player. Uh, the pro scouts, I talked to some people this week, and they're really high on him. He, uh, he should be a first-round draft choice. I think Piatkowski had 17 at halftime. Country had 19, so it was almost one-on-one -on -one there. There's uh, Brooks Thompson hitting the three. Thompson had six of I those I think uh, Randy Rutherford, that's his only uh, points in the first half. He had a tough uh, evening. He uh, hit a couple baskets late, but didn't shoot the ball as well in the uh, two games this week as uh, we've seen him shoot earlier in the season. This was a big shot, put you down by six at halftime. We were up 39-37 with about two minutes to go, and we made a turnover, and they outscored us 9-1 to one during that last uh, part of the first half, and uh, they go in with a six-point lead. The Cowboys 
on the move here. Manger goes up and in. I thought Nebraska played the best defense I've ever seen a Nebraska team play against us. Uh, they just they have very good perimeter players. They're uh, very outstanding athletes, and uh, they create a lot of problems for us. And there's a nice feed, uh, dunk shot, two points for us. And they call a charge on Bryant. Keanu Roberts on a nice drive to the basket. And we fought back, and uh, I think with about 11 minutes to go, it was a one-point game. And then Pikowski came down and hit this, and now I believe it's 62 to 58. Pretty tough. And Cowboys hit 13 trays last night. Yeah, anytime you hit 13 uh, three-pointers, normally you're going to win the basketball game. But it seemed like to me we never could get over the hump. And there's Pikowski hitting one from very deep. How do you block that? Guard that. Country inside really played tough. And like you say, I think he just got kind of wore down there at the end of the game. Well, he gets beat on a lot. Uh, he gets to go to the line quite often. But, you know, when you grade these films, uh, he could go a lot more often uh, because he does get banged around. I'm very proud of Bryant, not only for this game, the way he played, but all the way he's had a great season. But, you know, his grandfather passed this week. And I wasn't sure how he would respond in the contest last night. But he played like a champion. and. And uh, he won't be with us uh, at practice this week, but he will be back uh, for the game on Saturday with Colorado. He's very close to his grandfather, so it was a big loss uh, to uh, the big guy. Of course, our condolences to Bryant and his family. 89-81, the final there. Uh, tell you what, that, that's a tough place. Uh, that was probably the best game Nebraska's played all year, isn't it? Well, I would think it's one of the best that they've played, and uh, it was a must game for them. Uh, I think Danny Nee uh, felt like that they needed to beat us or Missouri, and, and they finished out the campaign in Columbia Saturday, and that won't be easy for them to win there. But by winning, I think they put themselves in a position where they have a chance to, to get an at-large bid. Well, uh, coming up Saturday, the final home game. That means a time to say goodbye to four outstanding, years, outstanding seniors for the Cowboys. And when we come back on the Eddie Sutton Show, we'll do that. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. When the Cowboys take the floor this Saturday against Colorado, it'll be the final home game for four outstanding seniors. In this week's Off the Court feature, Tom Dorado takes a special look at those young men. When Oklahoma State closes out the regular season against Colorado on Saturday afternoon, it will mark the final home appearance for four seniors, four special young men who helped carry on the Cowboy basketball tradition. Thompson can put him in front. He does. Brooks, are you surprised this day that seems so far away when you first arrived on campus is finally here? Yeah, I'm, I am surprised. It's a, it's been a long, long time coming, and it's something that, you know, I'm not looking forward to, but I'm kind of looking forward to. I think it's going to be very emotional, and you know, I've had some really good times here at uh, Oklahoma State, and it's going to be something that, you know, I'm going to cherish for the rest of my life. And uh, hopefully, you know, it won't be too emotional on uh, Saturday, but you know, I think it will be. And you know, it's it's come a little quicker than I wanted it to. Along that same line, things just don't come to an end come Saturday against Colorado. There's still a lot to accomplish the rest of this year. Yeah, I'm hoping that's just the beginning of my dreams. You know, I, I thought, you know, coming up to Saturday will be my last time playing in Gallagher, Iowa. But I'm thinking hopefully that we can make our, you know, the damage and the really lasting memories come after Saturday, and that's in the NCAA tournament. As a senior class, what do you think you guys have left behind for the younger players who are going to follow? Hopefully we've just left behind some good examples of how to get things done and you know how to be a mature, responsible, kind of going into your adulthood. You know, and hopefully we can look at it like Keontae and some of the younger guys that they can look and say, you know, those seniors really worked hard and that's why hopefully that we're going to achieve the goals that we had this year. You don't show your emotions that much, but I would think come Saturday, when you walk out here for the final time to play your final home game, that's going to be pretty emotional for you. Yeah, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be my last time playing in Gallagher Iber Arena, and uh, I feel it'll be very emotional. The crowd will be very high. You have grown up, obviously, on and off the court since you arrived at Oklahoma State. Basketball is a very big part of your life, but you've grown up in other areas. Yeah, uh, I feel like I could learn a lot of responsibility here and uh, going through a lot of changes from JUCO to uh, Division I is a big change, and I enjoyed it. What one memory will you take away from Oklahoma State once you leave and move on to something else? What will you remember on or off the court? Well, for one, I remember that the great shot, uh, uh, country shot against Missouri, and uh, it was great, and that's going to be one of the memories that I'll never forget. Or no, I 
can do this, Scott. <laughs> what kind of emotion do you think you'll feel when you take the court on Saturday? I think I'll be, be very anxious, uh, knowing it's my last game here in Gallagher, and, uh, well, uh, and also it being my senior year, and probably my last year to ever play basketball, organized basketball. Uh, it, it'll be very exciting. I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I'm going to miss, once again, I'll miss playing here a lot, and I've really enjoyed being here these past two years. Is there any one memory you'll take away from Oklahoma State when you finally move on? I think uh, hopefully we'll have some big memories with the tournament, but uh, I think one that really does stick out and uh, being from Stillwater is a very important to me was uh, probably sweeping OU this year and something had been done here in a while and uh, being from Stillwater and being familiar with the rivalry, it's probably uh, one I'll take with me. Having grown up in Stillwater, this day will have to be something special for you. Exactly. Uh, growing up in Stillwater, I've always had the desire when I went to junior college uh, so it was always in the back of my mind to hopefully come back to OSU and play. And being able to play in front of people I know, and not only for myself, but I think for my family and friends, being able to watch me play here has been uh, very enjoyable for them. And uh, it's, it's a dream come true for me. And uh, I'll miss playing here a lot. Now Thompson and Sutton for three. He's in his first two shots. What one memory will you take away from Oklahoma State when you finally do move on? Probably the memory from Gallagher is uh, Bryant's shot against Missouri last year, which was a very exciting and, and pivotal game for us in that season. But, you know, there's a lot of season left to play this year. And, you know, we have the confidence and uh, we're playing well right now. And hopefully we can go far in the NCAA tournament. And, and who knows, maybe make the Final Four in Charlotte. And with a little luck, we can win it all. Scott, not many players really get to play for their dad on any level. And I would think this will make it even more emotional for you come Saturday afternoon. I really haven't thought about it until this week, and it's kind of it's kind of a strange situation that uh, you really don't look towards your last game until it's really there. And uh, I don't think it really hit us until probably Saturday afternoon, where we walk out there with our family and, and friends looking in the audience. So it'll be very emotional. Four wonderful young men that all people that support Oklahoma State uh, should be very proud of. Uh, it's always a sad time for me that last home game when you uh, have those seniors for the last time because. You know, they're like sons to you, but uh, these guys have really put together, uh, you know, outstanding careers here. You know, they mentioned the sweep of OU, uh, they mentioned the country shot, but I think the one thing that they, they forget, they will have been in two NCAA tournaments. Uh, we've been in the NCAA tournament four years since I've been here, assuming we're going to get an at-large bid or win the Big 8 tournament, but, you know, that's something to be proud of, and that's the tradition that we want those seniors to pass down to those underclassmen. And uh, I like that attitude, that positive attitude. The big thrill is still, still lies ahead, meaning that one of the goals is to win the Big 8 tournament. Uh, Oklahoma State's only won it once, and I think that's one of the things that seniors are really pointing towards. And then, of course, uh, getting into the NCAA tournament. And with the parity we have today in the college game, uh, who says we can't get to, to the Sweet 16 again or maybe even to the Final Four with a few lucky bounces? Well, we hope that happens. And when we come back, we'll take a look ahead to Colorado in the final home game when the Eddie Sutton Show continues. You know, it was a good week for the Cowboys off the floor as well. ESPN's SB Awards, Bryant Reeves, the best college shot of the year in basketball, and also John Starks, former Oklahoma State Cowboy, now with the New York Knicks with the best NBA play of the year. So that was, was great a, news as well, wasn't you know, it? I watched the ESPYs the other night. It was interesting. Uh, you know, we play Colorado Saturday, and that'll be uh, the finale. And as I mentioned, I hope that the crowd will get out there spring break so our students are going to be gone so those adults are going to have to send these seniors off in grand style so get out there early and cheer those guys on but there's the standings with uh, just the games this weekend uh, left to be played uh, tonight right after my show on most stations <laughs> we got Iowa State playing at Kansas and then this Saturday I mentioned our ball game in Nebraska goes to Missouri and Missouri by winning will finish undefeated which I don't think anyone thought could ever happen Sunday, Kansas State at Iowa State, and Kansas travels to Norman to play the Sooners. And then uh, it's Big 8 uh, tournament time. But, you know, there's a lot of basketball going on in the state. Uh, the small schools are having the state tourney, right. and uh, the bigger schools are in the regional playoffs, and you've got all the NAIA schools having their state playoffs this week. So if you've got a team out there, get out there and, and support your ball club because there's a lot of great basketball. Coach, good luck. We'll talk to you next week. Look ahead to the Big 8 tournament. Okay, Bill. For Eddie Sutton, I'm Bill Teagans. We'll see you next week on the Eddie Sutton Show.